Hey, what's going on, crypto people? It is the Crypto Siege with another day in the life <laughs> and the crazy life that it's a digital asset space. Good afternoon. Happy Saturday. I think it's Saturday. I hope it's Saturday. I think it's Saturday to each and every one of you. I don't know why I lose track of the days uh, so often. I guess when you don't have to be anywhere, anytime, you kind of lose track of the days. So, yeah, in any case, guys, listen, the market is doing what the market does. Shout out to all the people in the metaverse. If you got some of that sand dollar, which I believe we have some, if you got some of that uh, decentral land, yeah, we sold the central land. I don't know if it was early or not, but it was pretty early. We sold it like two days ago. So in any case, very, very interesting uh, uh, to say the least. Uh, shout out to all the people that got some of those metaverse NFT gaming tokens, right? Uh, I'm interested to see what network is going to really, really do. I really like what they got going on there, but it's uh, for sure, but I think it's definitely a longer term hold. Market is doing what, it's, what the market does. Shiba Unu is having some great success, but I got to tell you, the word on the street today is two things. Ripple ODL, wow, she's pearly with an absolutely outstanding tweet. I'm not going to go over all the article on ripple.com forward slash insights. I'll go over a little bit, maybe a paragraph, but she's pearly really sums it up very, very well. We'll cover his tweet. And like I said, Rosalind and Layton is on the same page as the crypto siege about Gary Gensler that we have been saying from day one, they put him where they need him. Yeah, got exposed, got exposed for not having any background at all. Crypto, little to none. And he's getting, he's getting scripted stuff for his, um, for his, uh, for his courses, getting scripted getting sent to him, if you will, or put together for him. Yeah. And she called, she called it the same way that I called it. It's about his ascension to the SEC and then onward. Remember, this dude was privately selected. He was not publicly elected. And I'm telling you, there's a big difference. Who do you think selected this dude, a former Goldman Sachs guy? Who do you think? It, you, it would blow your mind. It would blow your mind if you discover the meetings and what goes on behind closed doors, all for about money and political gain. It would blow your mind. Tell you, you watch these things on TV, you think it's not reality. It's reality. It's reality. It is reality. Without question. So, guys, listen, we're going to go over the market. You know what? I think it's time for the crypto seeds to get a newer laptop. This is on the borderline of. Uh, obviously, it's not a tablet, but it's not like a full-blown computer. I forget what they, it's like a notebook, uh, if you will. And I just think that it cannot handle, first of all, I, I'm, a, I'm a 40 tabs uh, uh, a day guy. So I always have 40 tabs. I'm being dramatic, but uh, open at a time. So uh, I just think this poor little notebook-ish laptop, it's a Lenovo. Um um, it's just, you know, just can't kind of handle the stuff that I'm doing for sure. Uh, so, but anyway, in any case, you know, Polygon has been great to us. And so we, we, we took, we took a few <laughs> and put it on Celsius, uh, and Sable coin. So, um, uh, Ms. Crypto Seeds really wanted to do something that she's been really wanting to do with Dr. Joe Dispenza. Uh, so we're going to go hang out and do a week long, uh, retreat with that dude. If you don't know who Dr. Joe Dispenza, D-I-S-P-E-N-Z-A, I highly encourage you to go check that dude out. Um, we've done we've done two or three of his things, or three or four of his things, actually, uh, but we've never done a week long. So we're looking forward to doing that if we get in. It is it is one of those things like, you know, you had to try to get on an ICO or uh, back in the day before the thing sold out, you got the spinning thing. You try to put the thing in, you try to put the buy order in, it doesn't go through. That's exactly ha what happens with this dude's week long events. It's pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy, like sells out within uh, minutes. And so uh, we're, we're going to hop on there and uh, attempt to be one of the lucky few to get on 
uh, to that event. And so, yeah, we did that. It had another obligation um, that I needed to meet as well. So, yeah, we got to take take advantage of twenty thousand percent gains, right? You, you, you got to. You got to take advantage of that. <laughs> so anyway, guys, let's go over the market. I've been rambling long enough. Let me refresh. Let's see what's going on here. 2.7 trillion for the total market cap in all of crypto. Uh, the Bitcoin dominance is at 42.3%. Love to see that thing get back down under 40%. That would be awesome. Bitcoin is $61,497. Ethereum is $4,313. Oh, before I even forget, let me again say thank you thank you thank you very much to mickey b fresh and patty xrp for having me on their channel if you haven't seen that um interview you can check it out on mickey b fresh the DeFi standard with patty xrp absolutely cool hang it is so good to hang out with people and and talk with people who are like-minded um who uh if you will get the bigger picture of what's going on in the market for sure so that was a really really cool cool hang hanging out with those guys um and they just just continue to add value to this community do they not i love what they're doing uh i reminded them to you know you know stay you know you know hold the line right uh hold the line because sometimes we can get where wary in well doing right and so um i told them to continue pressing on because uh, they are a big time value add for sure so binance coins 522 dollars Cardano's a dollar ninety-seven cents. Solana's a dollar ninety-two cents. XRP's a dollar and seven. Polka dots forty-two dollars. Shiba Unu's is sixty-nine seventy-three. It's down a little bit, six point one percent down on the twenty-four hour. On the seven-day, however, it is up one hundred and fifty percent. Not bad. Not bad at all. Dogecoin, another mintable F asset on Flare Networks. Besides XRP, is at twenty-seven cents. Interesting thing with the market store right now. Terra Luna is $43.37. Shout out to Terra Luna. Goodness, God gracious. Yeah, I got some stuff on Luna. Got some stuff on Solana. Just hanging out, doing its thing there. Just to support the ecosystem. And to really, truly appreciate when Flare Network launches, you know, they, you know what they say. You can't appreciate good unless you know bad. You can't appreciate good unless you know evil. You can't appreciate uh what uh healthy if you don't understand unhealthy right so for me not that those platforms are bad but it will make me appreciate flare networks with flare finance and those things when those boys come to town it will certainly uh, allow me to appreciate and set a level set a certain level of expectations as well which is i think is important avalanche is $62.40 chainlink is $29.93 Polygon, a <laughs> dollar eighty nine. We sold between a dollar eighty eight and a dollar eighty three. Went up to two something, two dollars or something. But we just got on our hands and knees and said, "Thank you, thank you for that blessing." Got to tell you that Uniswap's twenty four dollars and eighty cents. Polygon is up twenty four percent on a seven day, which is pretty cool. Algorand, another mintable F asset on Flare Networks, is a dollar eighty two cents. Bitcoin Cash five hundred eighty seven dollars. Boy, I can't wait for these laggards, Bitcoin, Taz, Zcash, EOS, Ethereum, Classic to do their thing. I cannot wait. Can't wait to see it happen, man. It's going to be cool. It really is going to be cool. Stellar, another mintable F asset on Flare Networks is at 35.9 uh, cents. So, guys, the market is doing, you know, what the market does. And if you guys know anything about Popsicle Finance, let me know uh, in the chat. That would be really, really cool. Uh, for sure, uh, it's an interesting platform. I'm, de I'm des deciding whether or not I should stake the popsicle that we have left. We took profit on uh, just about half of it. And so eh, to try to see whether or not we should stake it or not. Anyone familiar with staking it, please let me know in the chat. That would be really, really appreciated and super, super cool. So where do we start? Do we chat? Let's start with, uh, let's start with the nasty this nastiness that is Jay Clayton. Let's, I mean, Jay Clayton, that is Gary Gensler. Let's start there. Shout out to Rosalind Layton. She is laying it down and not holding any punches on this dude. 
SEC share against this war on crypto is about his resume, something we've been saying from day one. And Ryan um, Selke of um, uh, uh, Masari was one who really kind of turned us on to that. Why is this messing up now? Come on. So, um, okay, there it is. Um, well, listen to article. No, I don't want to listen. Securities and Exchange Commission SEC Chair Gary Gensler's crusade against crypto has surprised many. His three-year stint as a senior advisor at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology (MIT) Media Labs Digital Currency Initiative before leading the SEC. Well, should we get rid of that? Um, that he would uh, bright that he would bring an enlightened approach to crypto. <laughs> Not so, no such luck. Yeah. Gensler's foray into crypto appears to be a more professional resume builder than a coherent regulatory vision for the innovation that can democratize finance. Along the way, he's been happy to play along with the SEC's word games and whether crypto is a currency or security, as I love that word games, as long as it moves him to center stage. It's part of the DC playbook. The regulatory white knight confirmed the premise to make things right, implement some industry-friendly policy marketed as pro-consumer, and then takes the next plum job. Man, I love it. I love it. Many misread Gensler. His MIT purge conferred the appearance of academic expertise on blockchain. It turns out there is little record of him writing or speaking about, te te about the technology until the school hired him in 2018. His few academic presentations were co-authored by the driving force of the school's crypto program, Media Lab Director Jochi Ito. Gensler's MIT speeches and interviews were not about the substance of blockchain, but rather commentary curated to make him look like a policy expert. And I gotta tell you, it worked. It worked. The archive of Gensler's MIT bio shows almost no background in technology. After 20 years at Goldman Sachs, his stint at MIT was a needed stop on the Democrat power train. They put him where they need him. I've been saying it from day one about this dude. In a uh, democratic powertrain conferring the academic bona fide to secure his nomination as SEC chair. Who do you think wanted him at the SEC? You and I. Who do you think wanted him there and why? In retrospect, the Ethos Media Lab policy strategy becomes clear. Keep retrograde Bitcoin unregulated. In other words, it is not going to challenge the incumbents. And they know it. It's not vital to Wall Street anyway. But every other crypto asset is set is up for regulatory grabs. In 2015, Ito told the MIT Bitcoin Expo that the Media Labs crypto program came together because we don't even know who is in charge. And he wanted MIT to step into that role. Ito's view was decidedly Bitcoin maximalist, saying the biggest risk to Bitcoin is the architecture of the community not being robust and the need to choose which assets other than Bitcoin would be in or out. Are altcoins part of it? What about Ripple, Ito asked. He was referring to the company that was pioneering a faster and a greener consensus protocol. To um, the XRP ledger to compete with Bitcoin's slow, fossil fuel intensive proof of work mechanism and it's always been about that and they know it remember guys the xrp ledger and xrp was the second not third fourth fifth or tenth 
It was the second ledger in our blockchain created. Everyone knew, they knew. They knew about faster and greener. They knew. They knew. Ito expertly deployed a progressive buzzwords. Think about that. And purrs to advocate for Wall Street's for Wall Street's preferred regulatory model. Community architecture, open networks, and a regulatory incubator that puts altcoins in Ripple in their place behind Bitcoin. Rosalind Leighton writes. You guys thinking about this Coinbase and coin market cap and oh no, they're all working together and they love, no. No, they love Ripple. I remember that going content creators talking about the buddy, buddy, pal thing with Coinbase. And I'm like, are you kidding? Why did coin market cap up and decide to take the, the uh, reporting of uh, liquidity from South Korea when they did? Because they didn't want Bitcoin to be displaced as number one. And they knew it was going to happen with XRP and Ripple in 2017, 2018. They knew it. Gensler was perfect. Gensler was the perfect front man for the lab. According to reporting by Charles Gasparini in the New York Post, Gensler moved quickly after coming aboard and requested a meeting in March of 2018 with then, requested a meeting with then SEC Chair Jay Clayton. The SEC just emerged from a rash of enforcement action against crypto frauds and scams coins throughout 2017 and was pondering whether to declare the three top cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, Ether, and XRP, to be unregistered securities and subject to costly enforcement action. Gasparina reports that Gensler advocated for a pre-pass for Bitcoin as a true crypto, but that Ether and XRP were skirting securities laws. Trading as non-registered securities without SEC oversight. Weeks later, he told the New York Times that there is a strong case for both of them, but particularly Ripple. They are non-compliant securities, according to Gensler. Gensler's zeal to be a top regulator and Ito's apparent zeal to pick a winner. Bitcoin were a match made in heaven. Neither seem interested in setting clear, coherent rules that could be applied across the board as much as they wanted to set rules that were best for them. In their June 28 present 2018 presentation, Gensler and Ida referenced the Howey test from the 1946 Supreme Court decision that established a method for defining securities but never contemplated the complexities of blockchains and ledgers. Gensler also proffered the deck, I don't know, is that proffered? Proffered the duck test. If something quacks, walks, and looks like a security, then it's a security. But Gensler and Eater assert that ducks can morph into giraffes if they are sufficiently decentralized. <laughs> something not contemplated in Howie, but eagerly advocated by Ethereum to his friends inside the SEC at the time. We're going to expose them, guys. It's going to happen. Gensler and Ita also made a self-contradicting regulatory indictment of Bitcoin rival XRP, saying it is an investment contract in Ripple, the company, but conceded that the XRP token and ledger, which ledger would still function independently if Ripple were to disappear. All of these exceptions seem rooted in making the lack of regulatory clarity a Rosoc test of convenient, self-serving theories. It lets Ito argue for keeping out coins outside of the community architecture while letting Ethereum get a regulatory pass. Gensler gets to lord over the regulatory realm, realm while bolstering his party credentials with flashy enforcement actions that deliver him to his next job, Treasury Secretary. Not all is well at MIT, however. While Gensler was golden, Edo took the fall for revelations that MIT Lab was financed in part by, well, Jeffrey Epstein and Leon Black. 
That's not the greatest of looks right there. Moreover, investors are revolving, uh, revolving. Moreover, investors are revolting against the SEC. On his last day in 2020, Clayton, in the name of investor protection, quote, unquote, filed a $1.3 billion enforcement action against Ripple, claiming that XRP has been an unregistered security since 2013 and, and that everyone should have known. The case has become an embarrassment for the agency. The case has become an embarrassment for the agency. Putting the SEC on, putting the SEC itself on trial for its arbitrary determinations and absurd take on due process. Over 50,000 outraged XRP holders have filed a class action lawsuit claiming that the agency tanked their holdings. By the way, guys, I'm part of that class action lawsuit. Are you? Are you participating? Do you appreciate the value that you can add by participating? Do you understand that what you do matters? Get hooked up. Go to John Deaton's um, um, page. Go to his page. Pen to the top of his page. John Deaton one is. Um, your ability to join this class action lawsuit. We can get to 100,000 without question, guys. Let's get it done. Let's let the world, let's let Congress know that we are not playing. Gensler refuses to engage the retail crypto investors he claims to be defending. And his incoherent, everything cracked down on the U.S. financial marketplace only strengthens the idea that his war on crypto is about furthering his career, not what's best for investors, the economy, or innovation. Wow, powerful, Rosalind Layton. Great job, great job. Powerful, powerful stuff. The ugly, nasty, dirty truth. Never forget it, guys. This dude was privately selected, not publicly elected. He was privately selected. And it looks like the, the boys at Goldman's and the JP Morgan's of the light pushed it. Politics and money. Hmm. Pretty, pretty sad stuff. But I'm glad we got, we got, we, I'm glad we got, ex we turned you guys on to this early from the beginning. That's why in all my tweets, Hashtag Gary Gensler is not your friend. Don't be mistaken. Don't be misled. This is about his thing. This is about his thing. And I believe Henman and Clayton's thing was about um, trying to get to a position monetarily where uh, Gensler is. So what happens when you get all, if you're in that politics and money game, what happens when you get all that money? What, 120 million net worth somewhere around there for Gensler? What do you do? You go to political ascension route. My humble opinion is Henman and Clayton, they're, they're, you know, they're still trying to get into the tens of millions, <laughs> right? They haven't got that money thing yet, but that's the game that these guys play. In. And I'm glad we got a chance to expose them. Let me see if I can find something here for you guys. Shout out to Ashish Burla. That dude laid it down. So here, what do I want to get to? Here it is right there. Um, let me do this. Is that it? No, that's not it. There it is here. The title is ODL sees record growth and traction in 2021. One particular thing I wanted to cover with you guys, then I'm just gonna go over She's Bro's tweet. Here it is. As crypto liquidity has improved and the market has continued to mature, it's now primed to support the larger payments that customers need. Are you listening to that? It's now primed to support the larger payments that customers need to manage their treasury operations. ODL for treasury payments makes it easier for fintechs and SMEs to improve their business cash flow. 
through access to liquidity and instant settlement across weekends and holidays. For, for added flexibility, ODL customers can choose to send XRP for cross payments directly through a crypto wallet or through a local crypto exchange. While customers are free to source XRP through third parties, more are choosing, more are choosing to source XRP on demand liquidity from Ripple. Resulting in more flexibility and choice while reducing friction in the payment flow. It also gives our customers the ability to grow and scale quickly with new partners and currencies by simplifying the onboarding process and enabling multiple currencies. To facilitate these instant payments, Ripple will source XRP from its balance sheet or from the market, from the balance sheet or from the market. When applied to treasury business payments, on-demand liquidity means more capital to scale core business operations and less time focused on managing FX no-show accounts. Cash is oxygen for business and ODL's ability to extend the line of credit gives customers access to capital instantly. Instantly. Let's listen to, let's take a look at uh, uh, Ashish Burrow's tweet here. On-demand liquidity, a labor of love from Team RippleNet and testament to the power of crypto. What was once a vision a few years ago now accounts for 25% of the total volume over our network, RippleNet. ODL accounts for more than 25% or 25% of the total volume on RippleNet. Wow. January of 2021, some thought ODL was dead. Today, 20 ODL send markets, 20 send markets are open. Volume incentives paid to customers have decreased by over 90% since 2019. And three, and three out of five of our highest transacting customers in 2020 upgraded to ODL. Three out of five. Six out of 10, if you will. Three out of five of our highest transacting customers in 2020 upgraded to ODL for XRP powered payments from solely the fiat based when they initially entered. And as it has always been the goal and the vision, the onboarding is something that they're comfortable with, get them comfortable with the technology and using fiat, blah, 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 blah. And then they will slowly recognize the power of using ODL and the digital asset XRP. And beyond our bread and butter, which is cross-board payments, Ripple is tackling use cases like treasury management, lines of credit, and liquidity services. Expect more at Swell. Enterprises are ready and excited to integrate crypto quarter four and beyond, here we come. Here we come. And so the Ripple Swell thing, just to let you know, is uh, November 9th and 10th, I believe. Let me see here. We got the speakers up. November 9th and 10th, 2021, the virtual, virtual, virtual. Meet the speakers, Brad, Muhammad. We've heard from Muhammad before. Managing Cindy Young, Managing Director of RippleNet Europe and Customer and Partner Services at Ripple. Um, there were some other ones here I wanted to share with you guys too. I don't know how we're going to make it work. I don't know if if um, how this virtual thing is going to work, but I'm sure it'll be awesome. You got you got um, uh, Azimo there, COO. You got uh, Instagram is going to be showing up. Gen Youth, interesting. CEO of Gen Youth. That's, that's going to be interesting. Alexa Click. Compound, Robert Leshner of Compound Labs. Compound is going to be there. That is going to be a speaker. That is very, very interesting. 
the CEO of FTX, the FTX Global. They got an FTX US as well. It's going to be there, Sam Bankman Freed. I wonder what that is going to be about. Can't wait. Brian Quintez, the former commissioner of the Commodity Future and Trading Commission, is going to be a speaker as well. Got the CEO of BitPay there. Wow. The CEO of CoinMe at this Ripple Swallow event. Interesting, interesting stuff. Very, very interesting. CEO and co-founder of Alliance for Innovative Regulation is going to be there. Interesting. And the deputy governor for the Royal Monitor Authority of Bhutan is going to be there. We all know about what happened with ODL there as well. So CBDC, I believe, um, there as well. So that's going to be exciting, guys. Great stuff happening in the market. Great things happening with Ripple, despite the bogus lawsuit brought by that. I don't even have a name for that, Jay Clayton. Despite it all, despite it all, it continues to expand and grow. Shout out to Ashish Burla for putting this tweet out for all of us. All right, guys, listen, I am going to end this video like I do all of my videos and remind you guys of this, that old money doesn't want you to win. They don't want us to win. They would rather that we remain a cog in their perpetual wheel of trading our time for dollars. They don't want us to play in the same playground that they play in. Well, we allow our money to work for us. This is our chance to win, guys. The digital asset space, uh, space is our chance to win. We are in the midst of the greatest transfer of wealth in the history of man. Are you participating or are you standing on the sidelines? Here's what I do know, that the battle for you has already been fought and the victory is yours. Go get it. I'll talk to you soon, guys. See ya. Bye.